Doc, do you think Ben Simmons can, can still be a point guard for, for a championship team like the one you guys want to become? Yeah, David, I don't know that question or the answer to that right now. Um, you know, so I don't know the answer to that. The bench unit struggled compared to their well, bench. Well, they didn't struggle. Um, you know, they didn't get a lot of shots. You know, in, in their defense, I think during that stretch it was more James. You know, um, you know than than them. So you know, um, yeah, it's, it's just a tough night. Where are you? If you get the coach, you have to let Adrian Griffin coach that game. You can't do that. You got to let him coach. Can't do that. Got to let him coach. Can't do that. He did the work. No, You're zero no, and two. No, no, he did no. the work. But that was. Hey, do you know what? First of all, he can't do that. But that's yes, he can. That's really hilarious. He can do the Doc that. has lost his first two games. He could be the All Star coach tonight. <laughs> you know what? You know what he could do. He could put him on his staff. For that. Put him on. You got to put him on his staff. That is. That is. Well, great. you could just. No, you you give him the money. We miss the shot and then nobody gets back. That's how we start out the third quarter. That tells you all you need to know about where our heads were. Um, you know, um, we, we had some guys here. We had some guys in Cabo. There were times you wanted to probably choke on. Oh yeah, definitely, and, and, and vice versa, by the way. You know. Yo, Doc Rivers has never taken an L in his life, I don't think, bro. My man, mm -hmm. he'll take an L and it's a dub somehow, he bro. Uh, he, he learned from the best. Yo, look, look, he, he finessed his way into the Bucks organization. <laughs> like, that's still so funny to that's me. That's crazy. When they call Doc to be a consultant, bro. I don't even think, I don't even think Doc on. did nothing dirty. Right? That's like, that's it's like, like, come on, man. It's not on. like he was retired. Like, if you call a retired coach to be a consultant. He was 41 and 41, which is the worst percentage any coach of the year. You are 50 fucking percent. And you won coach of the year? How is this man getting? Who is this man? Who does he know? <coughs> I can I, I've it. seen the trend now. I've seen the trend for years. What's the trend? The trend is always making excuses. Get Doc, we get it. Taking over a team in the middle of the season is hard. It's hard. We get it. Just like getting traded in the middle of the season is hard for a player. We get it. But it's always an excuse. It's always throwing your team under the bus. They lose to Memphis. All oh, it's just players. Memphis was playing G League guys and two-way guys. Then you look at his quotes over the weekend. Now he wants to take credit for the James Harden trade to the Clippers working out. He wants credit for that. There's just no, <laughs> there's never accountability with that guy. Well, there's never see. accountability. Well, let me see. Most people are going to claim that I'm a Doc Rivers hater because I've made so many videos about him. And you wouldn't exactly be wrong. But the other night, he made a comment that made me just say, What will you learn? The NBA has Doc Rivers listed as one of the top coaches of all time, and my honest reaction is... I truly, truly do not understand it. The only accomplishment this man has is one championship to his resume, with three Hall of Famers. Now while many have used Doc Rivers' playoff history as the reason for why he's a bad coach, which I have also done and also agree with. Many people miss the biggest problem with him that I have and is the true underlining issue going unhighlighted. Doc Rivers is not a coach. What do I mean by this? Well, to be a coach, you need to be a leader, and Doc Rivers is simply not a leader. Doc Rivers is a narcissist, plain and simple. He never takes accountability, which is not the quality of a leader. Let's break it down. Doc Rivers is only concerned about winning when it boosts his own interest, and any time he loses, he looks for any excuse but himself. He did it with the Celtics, he did it with the Magic, he did it with multiple people on the Clippers, he did it with Ben Simmons and Harden, and multiple members of the 76ers as well, and now he's doing it with the Bucks. Which is why I'm making this video. Doc Rivers has left a path of havoc and devastation behind him everywhere he has gone, while well, he still somehow makes a career out of being a fraud. Let's go chronologically through the years of each team and break down all the problems he's had with players and the franchises while trying to cover up for himself, putting up a shield and sword of words to protect his pathetic ego and status and his failure to take accountability. Doc started out coaching for the Magic. Here, he wouldn't have too many problems as he was still new. He had to play by the rules and help break out as a coach. But there still are a few notable mentions of controversy he got into during his first few years in Orlando. I'm sure you all, I'm sure a lot of you know the story by now, 
but in 2000, Tim Duncan almost took up the chance to join the Orlando Magic and leave the Spurs, under one condition. He got to bring his family along to away games. Doc Rivers refused, stating it was a business trip and families don't go on business trips. Tim Duncan was understandably frustrated and refused the offer, and the other players on the team became verbally angry as well. This was the first glimpse we got into Doc Rivers' arrogance and how it leads teams to fail. Tracy McGrady, understanding the situation of how Doc practically cost them a championship or more, yelled out, I want to slap the fuck out of Doc Rivers' ass. McGrady said, after all these years, I just found this out during the All-Star break. Doc Rivers, wait until I see him. Bruce Bowen summarized it by saying, Doc said no. That's where we lost Tim Duncan. This wouldn't be the end of his Orlando controversy though. Several players would leave due to altercations with Doc Rivers, which as we'll see as the years go on, will become a pattern. Horace Grant had an argument with Doc Rivers after having issues with his knee, and came out saying that McGrady also hated Rivers. Rivers and McGrady did damage control together and stated that this was untrue, but then later McGrady criticized Doc, with Doc criticizing him back saying, you deal with relationships every day in a heated environment, where you're screaming, you're pushing, and you're prodding. You gotta assume at some point, there's gonna be someone who takes issue with the way you do things. And when that happens, then the second decision you have to make is, can that guy still help the team in a positive way? If he can still help the team, then you take the hit yourself. If it becomes a distraction, then you have to eradicate it. That's what it became. Remember this quote whenever we dive into the Celtics and the other teams. Once again, an example of him covering for himself and molding the narrative. When McGrady and other players spoke out about him being an awful leader and coach, and following a 42-40 season and the failure of Tim Duncan, he was fired from the Magic, leading to our next chapter. Doc Rivers' boss on the Magic, GM John Westbird, even said, Sometimes Doc has a selective memory of the past, which again, we'll see a pattern of. And here's where we get into the juicy part of Doc's career, the glorious championship years, which he shouldn't even be credited with because Tom Thibodeau trained three Hall of Famers to be the top defensive powerhouse of the league. But yeah, sure, woo, yay, Doc Rivers, sure, you won a championship, whatever. In the first few years in Boston, the Celtics got swept, lost a game seven, and had an 18 game losing streak with one of the worst records for the franchise since 1996. But we're not here to talk about how Doc Rivers fundamentally is terrible at basketball. We're here for the drama he causes. When Paul Pierce first started with Doc, they were already having problems, with Pierce stating that they often butted heads with his new head coach. Basketball Network puts it, their arguments range from the truth shot selection to trusting his teammates with the ball. Paul said that they held too many meetings with Doc and team president Danny Ang just to discuss his shot selection. People wouldn't believe how often they argued. They were always telling me how to play. This made Paul Pierce want to leave the Celtics even before the big three was made. Even with the championship, his years in Boston were littered with arguments and controversy. The 2008 Celtics roster was full of high egos with them constantly getting into arguments which snowballed into fights. With Boston.com reporting, Paul Pierce said Kevin Garnett once proclaimed, despite his skinny frame, he was the strongest player on the team. When Pierce contended Garnett couldn't even beat their own teammate Leon Powell in an arm wrestling match, things escalated quickly. But what does a coach do when they have a locker room full of egos? I'll tell you what they don't do, get their ego involved in the contest as well, which is exactly what Rivers did. Doc even stated himself when talking to KG on a podcast years later, my problem with y'all wasn't when y'all lost, it's when y'all went on a streak and tried to walk around rocking your shades like your hot stuff. I'm like, oh boy, here we go, we're about to go to a bad place. Following a win in Indiana, Kevin Garnett stated in the same interview describing it as the locker room went up in flames, as Ray Allen and Rohan Rondo started getting into a physical fight, and Doc Rivers still hearing the fight from outside with the media claimed that the team was just celebrating. 
this would be one of many times that Doc has gone on record lying to the media. Things like this would be the regular, as Ego's intentions only began to rise. Following the next few seasons, more fights and mayhem would come about as the Celtics roster proceeded to keep throwing F-slurs and N-slurs at each other. Then, Ray Allen felt that he wasn't getting enough playing time and wasn't being used to his full potential, as he wasn't being passed the ball and so on. When Allen brought it up to Doc, Allen felt his response was lackadaisical. Sean Grand put it saying, The seeds of the trade were planted early. When the Celtics lost to the Lakers in the 2010 Finals, Grand felt the blueprint of the team crater on the trip back to Boston. When we got on that plane to LAX, the whole thing was done, Grand said. By the time the plane landed, the blueprint and the momentum in effect had already started rolling. There was also another fight on the Celtics bus as well. This further pushed Allen to leave to one of the Celtics biggest competitors, the Miami Heat, and the rest of the team felt betrayed. This was one of the biggest splitting factors for the team, with the bad taste still being left in everyone's mouth to this day. Despite Doc Rivers saying over a decade ago that the feud would be fixed, with none of them showing up for each other's jersey retirements or Hall of Fame ceremonies. Well, what does that have to do with Doc? It seems like Ray Allen was the one that left and everyone else got mad. Well, actually, rather than me hate on him, how about you have Doc himself tell you? That's right, Doc Rivers himself said that he's the reason that Ray Allen left. Rivers even made passive-aggressive comments about the situation, saying, As a coach, you gotta do what's best for the team. If guys don't like it, they're gonna leave. If they stay and don't like it, well, your team's going to suck anyway. Even if it happens, you still have to do it. You can't coach worrying about any individual. Sounds familiar to what he said with the magic? He also flat out said, I was pissed at him. I was pissed at him for his reasons for leaving. But what people don't get, I wasn't pissed at him for leaving Miami. I could care less that he went there. When Doc Rivers gave Allen the ball less, it was in favor of Rohan Rondo, who he felt was better. So that means that Rohan Rondo and Rivers got together at least, right? Well, you'd be wrong again. Remember when I said that Doc was no better than the players when it came to ego and pissing contest? Well, just like everyone else in the locker room, Doc tried to physically fight Rohan Rondo. Rondo and Rivers had a history of not liking each other, stating in intense dislike. Then it all came to a head when Rondo dropped an F-bomb on Rivers, in which Rivers retaliated by charging at Rondo. Chris Sheridan even stated, Doc Rivers does not like Rohan Rondo, okay? This is the number one thing that's driving Doc out of here. He's sick of coaching Rohan Rondo, and Rohan Rondo is just a bad locker room guy. The fight happened in 2013, resulting in Doc Rivers stating that he would not return to the Celtics because of Rondo and making us move on to our next chapter. The Clippers era is even juicier than the last because it's where we get a lot of drama and this is where Doc Rivers did the most lying and players were the most vocal about it. When the Clippers kept losing, as well as players getting into arguments such as Paul George and Harrell getting into a heated altercation on the bench, Doc Rivers took the opportunity to throw these players under the bus and blame team chemistry, saying, we just didn't get along well enough as a group. You can't win without cooperation. That's the only way you can win, and obviously, better play. Except the problem wasn't that they didn't get along with each other, it's that they didn't get along with Rivers. As mentioned, always standing up for himself and passing blame with his own ego. And the better play comment Paul George touches on. He responded by criticizing the fact that Doc can't coach correctly, saying, during the whole process, we never worked on adjustments. We never worked out what we can do differently. Just literally having the same shit happening over and over again. We didn't practice during the whole year. That's hard to do when you're putting a fresh group of guys together because the problems you have during games, that shit can get ironed out in practice. Marcus Moores backed up the claims saying, 
I don't think we put enough time into working on exactly what we needed to fix. More of us were just relying on talent and relying on the guys we had. Sometimes I think we were just relying on how good we are on paper, not actually breaking it down and really finding out what we can do better. Now while there were problems in the locker room, again, Doc only continued to make it worse, with players coming forward and saying the same thing I've been telling you all video, practically word for word. Rivers became as prominent a character in the workplace drama as Paul or Griffin or any other member of the roster, and as the authority in charge of managing sensitivities and arbitrary, arbitrating disagreements, Rivers increasingly grew entangled with the rest of the egos. And it seemed like Doc also had fun with it, like sending playground bullies after each other, reporting he would instigate and critique players behind their back to each other. Many Clippers reportedly saw Rivers as somewhat fake, a reputation that was perhaps solidified. JJ Redick was publicly against Doc and the Rivers for many reasons like this, as well as the team's failure to win. But Doc Rivers tried to spin the narrative once again, saying, JJ Redick was begging to return to the Clippers, which Bleacher Report puts, a declaration that rang so false to anyone who knows Redick that there was a collective bewilderment that Rivers would even say it aloud in polite conversation. For several of his players, it was further proof Rivers had a willingness to peddle mistruths in an effort to spin perception to his liking. Peddle mistruths in an effort to spin perception to his liking? You don't say. Kevin Arnovitz continues saying, he's been overrated as a manager of relationships and egos. He finishes off the statement as well, saying, Doc Rivers might not, in fact, be the ideal coach for a team of strong veteran personalities. And that's been my entire point this whole video. Doc Rivers is a narcissist that simply knows how to play the media game. He can't handle veteran egos or talent because he has his own ego and will, exactly as stated, peddle mistruths to his liking, as everyone on the roster and all Clippers executives have mentioned. However, despite the evidence, Doc Rivers continues the same storyline and blames everyone but him about the Clippers, saying, That team was never going to win. We just didn't get along well enough as a group, and you can't win without cooperation. Well, maybe they didn't get along well enough because you literally made them point fingers at each other talking behind their back. JJ Redick fired back stating how injuries on the team was what contributed to the losses. Him and Jamal Crawford also pointed out the irony of Doc Rivers saying that the team needs to be held accountable and take accountability, when they've all publicly stated their Clippers problems, while Doc has not. So in reality, as usual, Doc is the one who needs to take accountability. JJ Redick also continues the point I've been saying, saying that the coach is responsible to make sure that they do get along not turn them against each other. We hope you know that's not, even though there were issues in the lock, that's not the reason we didn't advance in the playoffs. I, I, I thought it was weird. I thought it was weird. I'll, I'll just say that. I, I um, thought it was weird, not to cut I thought it was weird, but to me, the first thing that came to my mind was the one word was accountability. Like it, it made it seem like we're over here and there are, he was over here. Like, yo, I thought this was all together. So accountability was like, yo, we weren't, that's it. Like we're, yeah. that's the part that messed me up. Yeah. That, that kind of messed me up too. Cause I feel like I know I have, uh, and, and when we have talked about this, uh, publicly, whether it's been on a podcast or whatever, um, everybody I've talked to about it has kind of owned their own mistakes. Yes. If, that, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And realizes, especially later on, like that we, we still could have had something special. Um, and then to not get any of that like accountability from him and he was the GM. So like if, if people were getting along, like it's, I don't know, it's kind of on you. Let's, 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 let's take it to the simplest form, right? Let's yeah. Take it to the very simplest form, the, the pure essence of it. How's the team you coach right now? How, Say what again? How old is your team that you coach? Eight, nine years old. If they're not getting along, whose fault is it? Who's, whose job is it to get everybody on the same page? Oh, I had to stop him in practice two days ago. Because uh, after a drill, somebody told uh, something that I didn't think was particularly nice to another kid. So I stopped the drill. I lined them all up, 
we're not going to speak to each other that way. That doesn't happen. I pointed out to one another kid, hey, the other day in warmups, you know, Manoa was trying to shoot threes. You told him he can't shoot threes. Right. I was like, why? Why are you doing that? That that's not being a good teammate, right? It's on the coach, one hundred percent. The Clippers organization even professionally said it in their response to the firing, saying, "The organization ultimately determined that the locker room, as currently constructed, lacked the requisite leadership and metal to be a true championship team." It never ends with Doc, especially with the Clippers specifically. But I digress. Let's move on to the 76ers. Ah, uh, the 76ers, where Doc Rivers' lying was put on even more public display. Say what you want about Ben Simmons. Say what you want about Harden. Everyone knows I sure have. But Simmons has a point in saying your teammates are supposed to have your back. Your coaches are supposed to have your back. And I didn't have that at all. Stating that Doc Rivers intentionally was just trying to fuck with him. Not only that, but once again, the countless blaming of players to the media after losing in the playoffs. After the loss to the Hawks, a reporter asked if Ben Simmons can still be a good player for a championship team. And Doc responded, I don't know. Now while Ben Simmons had his issues, as a coach, your response should be, yes. Build your team up, not tear them down. And don't help the locker room point at Ben. Doc Rivers of course tries to cover himself up, saying, that one comment thing had nothing to do with why Ben wanted to leave. He even stated, I want the kid to do well. I don't have any bad feelings about him. Doc Rivers even went as far as to make up the bullshit to hype himself up, saying, There's nobody that's been more supportive than me. I have a tape someone sent me of almost an hour of me over and over praising Ben Simmons. Yeah, right. If that were true, you wouldn't have hesitated, which Doc Rivers proved himself by undoing his previous comments, subtly calling Ben a crybaby, stating, We need people to tell us the truth. Unfortunately, as a coach in the NBA, I have to do it a lot. I've accepted it as a coach over the years. Some handle it well, and some don't. Sometimes I don't deliver it well, even though I try. At the end of the day, everything I try to do is about winning. The people who can handle that can handle me very well. The people that can't probably don't handle me well, and I don't lose an ounce of sleep over it. Again, compare that to his excuses with the Magic and the Celtics. Now you may again try to be on Doc's side given how Ben handled the situation, but in comparison, here's what his teammates said. If I didn't like playing with him, I would be honest about it. I love playing with him because he adds so much to our team. We've been building this team around us. I'm disappointed that he's not here, Embiid said. He's a huge part of our team, Harris added, so him not being here, it is disappointing. It's like I said to guys on the team, to all of us, he's still part of the team. He's still our brother as well, so I hope the situation could get resolved. Doc then suspended Ben from practice claiming that he was a distraction, again similar to other excuses he's made, which only made things worse. Once Ben left, he ended the back and forth summarizing it saying, Doc Rivers said what he said, nobody apologized, and Doc Rivers was never reprimanded, which it seems Doc never is, which is the point of this video. Then we move on to James Harden. James Harden was yet another victim of Doc Rivers putting down players after losses, with clips of him flat out saying, James Harden was the reason we lost, after losses to the Pistons. After Harden shot 4 for 19 one night, Doc Rivers did the same thing he did with the Clippers, picking a player to stand in the center of the locker room to have tomatoes thrown at them. ESPN puts it, Days later, Rivers brought it up in a team meeting, sources said, specifically mentioning several of the players who ex expressed concerns about Harden's actions. The whole episode was uncomfortable, one team source said. Even if we agreed of the substance with Rivers' message to Harden, the idea of holding him accountable it was awkward for the players who were named. Harden reportedly was one of the biggest unofficial reasons that Doc got fired from the 76ers because of their constant rocky relationships and tensions like this. Doc Rivers even admitted it while he was out of a coaching job, saying, he's probably why I'm on TV right now. But instead of taking accountability as we keep saying, he kept placing the blame on Harden for overreacting, stating, I would say not making the all-star team really bothered him. 
even though Doc continued to degrade him in post-game interviews along with Ben Simmons, debating on the Dan Patrick show which player frustrated him more, rather than pointing out that he is the common denominator in every altercation between players on his teams. In any case, Doc was fired from the 76ers and was out of coaching for a year, until this season. And then we have the Bucks. I won't comment on the fact that the team is 3-7 since hiring him, but I will comment on how Doc responded, which caused me to make this video and once again point out Doc's arrogance. His typical tactic of pointing fingers to the players rather than him as the coach, saying, Our players were in Cabo. Yeah, the Bucks roster that has Damian Lillard and Giannis that scored 200 points in an All-Star game with Dame winning MVP were definitely in Cabo. It's not the fact that you're just terrible, Rivers. And finally, someone else commented on it. Remember JJ Reddick's criticism from the Clippers? Well, JJ Reddick continues his criticism, screaming, I've seen this trend for years. The trend is always making excuses. Doc, we get it. Taking over a team in the middle of a season is hard, but it's always an excuse. It's always throwing your team under the bus. There's never accountability with that guy, which is exactly what I've been saying this whole time. So hopefully, with all this evidence, you see my problem with Doc Rivers and his own vanity and self-absorption. If you still don't believe me, then viewers, I now have a challenge for you. Every time the Bucks lose now, keep account of how many times he talks about his own coaching and how many times he talks negative about the players. I guarantee you him criticizing the players outweighs criticizing himself at least 3 to 1. Ah, 3 to 1. A number Doc Rivers is also fond of. Anyway, I genuinely don't understand how Doc Rivers still holds a coaching position with these claims. Remember, this isn't even mentioning his playoff failures. Doc Rivers just needs to stay out of the locker room and out of basketball operations for any team. I know I ranted about this video, but Doc Rivers being a scared lying baby against the media has always bothered me just as JJ Redick said. I could go on for hours. And with that being said, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. I'll see y'all in the next one. Nathan Budnett, angrily signing off. This, this is, is not okay. This needs to stop now.